Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today we're taking a look at 110 Film's Big Brother, 126 Film. Okay, before I get into 126 Film, let's rewind just a little bit and take a look at my 110 Film video. 110 film comes in these plastic cartridges that are incredibly small and easy to load by just dropping them into your camera. So yes, 110 film was a small plastic cartridge that was easy to load and easy to shoot, but Kodak had actually put this same cartridge system into practice a number of years earlier when they introduced 126 film in 1963. Now like 110 film, 126 film was aimed at consumers who like to be able to quickly load film easily and without the hassle of loading 35 millimeter film. And the 126 film format was incredibly popular in the Instamatic camera line. These little boxy cameras that were mostly automatic functioned cameras that would just be able to load and start shooting images by popping your cartridge into the back slot. Now most of the Instamatics were of these boxy designs and Kodak made a bunch of them themselves. But there were also some higher end 126 cameras like these that look pretty much like a 35 millimeter camera SLR, but it has some different lens options in terms of being interchangeable with just screw off lenses. And they were just of a little bit different design. But if you take a look in the back here, you will notice that it does take 126 cartridges instead of 35 millimeter film. So yes, 126 comes in plastic cartridges like these, which are just very similar to 110 cartridges. The film itself starts on one side and gets spooled across to the other and has a little slot on the back that you could see the number of the exposure printed on backing paper, which normal 35 millimeter film lack. Now, 126 film was the exact same kind of film as 35 millimeter in terms of width, but 126 film had just different sprockets on them and it lacked the normal amount of sprockets on the top and bottom and instead would normally just have one sprocket per frame to help guide it through the camera as it was being shot. Now originally 126 film was just in reference to the size of the frame. They would be printed with old school photo enlargers that would crop in a little bit and you would get a frame that was about 26 millimeters by 26 millimeters. So a square instead of the more rectangular shape of a normal 35 millimeter frame. Today though you can get a uncropped version of your frame if you're digitally scanning the film and you usually end up with a frame that's closer to 28 millimeters by 28 millimeters. So with all that being said, can you shoot 126 film today? Actually, with a little bit of ingenuity, you can pretty easily shoot 126 in those old Instamatic cameras today. But there's a catch or two. See, nobody currently makes 126 film today, including Kodak. They discontinued all their stuff at the end of the 1990s. Uh, around the same time they decided to axe disc film as well. Now the last company largely making 126 film was a company called Ferrania in Europe. And Ferrania still kind of exists today, but they stopped making 126 film in 2007. So to shoot 126 film in these adorable little Instamatic cameras today, you just need a couple of things to be able to get going. Now you either need an old 126 cartridge, which you can get expired film off of eBay or just different online sources or even thrift stores if you're lucky. Alternatively though, some different companies sell adapters that you can buy instead of trying to track down and get 126 original plastic cartridges. I'll throw a link to some of that in the description in case some of you guys are looking for 126 film adapters. The idea here is that you open up one of these cartridges and load in a roll of 35 millimeter film. Now I have a cartridge that I've actually cut open in a way that it will slot back together. So normally this is done in darkness because you need to handle the film completely but I'll show it to you in the light. Now you have to do this with a 26 exposure roll or it will be too much film. So first of all, we carefully pull out an entire roll of 35 millimeter and then we cut it cleanly so we just have an unexposed roll in our hand. Now you need to still have the spool from a 126 cartridge and you tape your film to the end of that, slot it into the middle there where it will be exposed and then into the end here. 
So close up your canister, put some pieces of electrical tape around it in case you're concerned about light leaks, and remember to cover the back opening as well, because normal 35mm film doesn't have backing paper like 126 would. Now if you do get an adapter, it is a lot easier to do this. Now not all cameras will work properly with this method, so you might have to do a little bit of trial and error. Now the unique thing about doing this is that the way the 126 cartridge is sized, you'll be able to expose onto your 35mm frame sprockets here on the top and the bottom and this is kind of a fun thing to do if you're shooting film and experimenting with different formats especially in these old school cameras and it will result with you getting an image that's exposed over top of these holes now the only drawback that you really encounter when you're exposing over the perforations of your film is that a lot of labs depending on the scanner units that they have are not able to scan that extra area of the film because it's normally unexposed. A lot of specialized scanning units and labs just don't have the physical capability of capturing that part of your film negative when they're scanning it. So the alternative is to either flatbed scan it yourself using a special film flatbed scanner that you can get, or if you have a lab that has a flatbed unit, then you can ask them to flatbed your film instead of putting it through their normal scanning units. Just be aware that this can come with an extra price tag, and you wanna specify that first because they just won't necessarily know how you've shot your film until they start to see it. Now, after you've loaded your film into a 126 cartridge, you want to pop it out and take it to a lab in a black canister or just some light tight way because you won't have a normal canister to roll it up into. So there you go. You can give all those old 126 Instamatic box cameras a second life and shoot some 35 in them if you want and get some fun experimental results. Now, just remember though, when you're loading those 126 cartridges, you have to do that in the dark so you don't ruin your 35 millimeter film. Thanks so much for watching and I hope that you learned a little bit more about yet another obscure format. And subscribe if you haven't done so already as I continue to talk about more obscure formats like these and different formats in general and history and all sorts of different cameras and stuff like that as well. Thanks so much and I'll see you guys soon.